It's my post fight reaction to Fabio Wardley versus Fraser Clark. Fraser Clark came out being very aggressive. I think Wardley in the uh, second half of the first round started to really pick it up. And he caught Fraser Clark with a huge left hand. I think it was a left hook. Then he got him to the corner, started to jab a little bit more. Um, Fabio looked very, I would say, confident and comfortable in this second fight. It looked more so like Clark started off a little bit skittish. He wasn't really afraid. He was kind of more so going to be preserved. They kind of like switched roles. First, last fight, Clark was aggressive. In this fight, War Wardley was aggressive. And he caught Clark with a good right hand while he was on the ropes. And the right hand really didn't uh, have a huge effect on Clark. He was stunned, but he was more so uh, aware of what, what was going on. But then he got stunned with another right hand. And this right hand caught him like on the side of the temple. And for some reason, he was stuck on one knee on the ground after he dropped. And he was hanging on the ropes with his arm, but his face was like twitching a little bit where it was contorted to another place. And it looked like he had a brain injury. You know how sometimes guys in football or rugby, they'll get tackled real hard and they'll kind of be stuck in this position where their arms look like they have something cerebral going on. And it looked like he had somewhat of a brain injury early on. I don't know if it was a concussion or... Concussions happen like that where guys face a twitch up where they'll be stuck to a certain position physically for a little while. Fabio Wardley hit him that hard. It looked like he put a dent in the side of his head, but what I'm starting to uh, realize now that it was a fractured cheekbone. Uh, Clark has high cheekbones, so on the side of his face where his cheek goes all the way up by uh, next to his eye, he suffered a huge uh, injury next to his eye and it made it look like he had a dent in the side of his head, a fractured cheekbone from what I'm hearing, allegedly. Don't know at this point fully, but that's what the word is out right now. Um, but Wardley show he has a lot of power in this fight. Um, hoping that Clark can make a huge recovery, but that was a first-round knockout by Fabio Wardley. And that he showed that he has a lot of power. He shows that he's confident. He shows that he knows what he's doing when he goes in there. Uh, he also shows that experience means a lot. It could be a f foreshadowing to what Danny Dubois kind of uh, did with Usyk. He didn't have the uh, best fight in the beginning. But later on, as uh, the fight went on, he started to get a lot more confident. But at the end of the day, he got out boxed and ended up getting stopped by Usyk. But... It goes to show that a lot of these fights, you can make a difference in these fights. Especially with a guy like uh, Fabio Wardley. You can make a difference. He's he's young. He has experience. He's fought good competition. But he still needs to fight certain body types and fight certain styles. And a style that he learned from like Fraser Clark that he can now add to his repertoire as far as styles he's winning against. He can say, well, I've seen this before. And that's kind of what played into this fight. I think he went into this fight a lot more confident. He wasn't really afraid of Fraser Clark. Fraser Clark wasn't afraid of him. Um, when they see each other, they greet each other. It wasn't too much of a fuss. Or, well, I don't like this guy. I feel like he's trying to do this to me. It wasn't none of, none of that going on. So, I don't know. They made some uh, big differences in this fight. It really did. It made some big differences in this fight because Wardley wasn't really worried like he was the first fight. The first fight, he was more so like kind of quiet, reserved. This fight, he was a lot more confident out in front. I think Clark was a lot more confident than the last fight. This fight, he was still confident, but not barking or chirping like he was the last time. When you're in a ring with a guy before and it's not bad blood, which they don't have bad blood, um, it's not going to really be that much going on, but I hope Fraser Clark be able to make a comeback. Uh, I hope he'll be able to continue his career with his family, uh, be able to support them. Don't like the injury he had. That's boxing is very dangerous. 
That's why we have the discussions we have about people using things. Because if somebody would have had been using something and hit Fraser Clark, probably wouldn't be here right now. So that's the reason why I try to stay away from things like that. Uh, Wortley is already strong enough to put someone out of there. With, at his weight at 241, he was able to use that weight in a good direction as far as being able to use it and slow down uh, Fraser Clark, being able to corner him, being able to uh, have some good hand speed. I felt like his hands was fast. His counter ability was very fast. I don't know if you remember the timing from the last fight, but that's what happens when you usually have a fight right after you have the last fight. You come back and have a rematch. So it makes a big difference. But I'm proud of Wardley, though. Uh, he needed that fight, especially a big bounce-back fight after having his nose exposed the way it was last time. I'm pretty sure he didn't want to get into that type of fight this time. And even though he was a guy who could have won the last fight, he became somewhat of a person who was looked at as a loser because he had most of the, the, the damage in the fight. He had a lot of damage. He had all the damage in the fight. So now with him able to come back and put uh, Clark down, proves a lot to himself and other people as well. But that's all I got. Like and subscribe.